Okay, let's see if I can't get a solution to 6.2 number 2G. That's the challenge. Uh, we have a vector space. It's 2 by 2 matrices with real entries. And we have a set. Let's call it um, M1, which is 3, 5, negative 1, 1. M2 which is negative 1, 9, 5, negative 1, and M3, which is 7, negative 17, 2, negative 16. Okay, so that's my set. My first job is to orthogonalize these. That process, called Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization, takes the first vector and leaves it alone. Okay, so what I have here is I have m1, let's call it m1 bar, is just 3, 5, negative 1, 1. Now what's going to happen here conceptually is if you had one arrow here and one arrow here, and you were trying to make those orthogonal, you'd want to decompose the second arrow into the piece that is in line with the first arrow and the piece that's perpendicular. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to say, okay, well, M2 bar is going to be the old M2, negative 1, 9, 5, negative 1, minus the piece that is in the direction of M1. So that's the direction of M1. That's the vector M1. Now I just have to get the right scalar in front of it. Turns out that the scalar there is going to be, let me just write above there, it's the inner product of M2 with M1 over the inner product of M1 with M1. Okay, so I have to figure out what those two numbers are. I'll do that sort of in my scratch work off to the side. So, Uh, oops, I got that backwards. That's M1, M2. My mistake. Uh, okay, so we've got to get the inner product of M1 with M2. Remember the inner product of matrices, if you go back a section, is the trace of the multiplication of the conjugate of the second times the first. So in our case, that's the trace of, let's see, negative 1, 5, 9, negative 1, 3, 5, negative 1, 1. Okay, how do you take the trace? Well, uh, first I guess I have to multiply these. Negative 1 times 3, negative 1, neg 5 times negative 1, negative 5, so that's negative 8. Uh, this entry doesn't really matter, this entry doesn't matter. This one, 45 minus 1 is 44. Uh, so the trace, of course, is adding the diagonals. 44 minus 8 is 36. So this top number is 36. Now I have to do the trace of M1 with M1. The trace of M1 with, uh, sorry, the inner product of M1 with M1 is the trace of... Let's see, 3, negative 1, 5, 1, multiplied by 3, 5, negative 1, 1. So, the trace, let's see in the upper right entry it's 10. Don't care about that, don't care about that. Then we have 26. Hey! So the trace of that is also 36, 10 plus 26. 36 over 36, that works pretty good. Those cancel. We get out. Let's see, 1 minus 3 is minus 4, 9 minus 5 is 4, 6 plus 1, sorry, 5 plus 1 is 6, negative 1, negative 1 is minus 2. That is orthogonal to that, meaning that the inner product of those two you can check would be 0. You can do that same process with M3, but you have to make sure that it's orthogonal first to M1, 
Well, how do you do that? You do m1 inner producted with m3 over m1 inner producted with m1 in the direction of m1. Then you have to take away the part that is parallel to m2. How do we do that? We go m2, m3. If you take away the part that's parallel to m1 and the part that's parallel to m2, you're left with the part that's perpendicular to both of them. Um, in this case, uh, let's see, what are we going to get? I'll just tell you what the calculation is. Um, it's 9, negative 3, 6, negative 6. Okay? Those are orthogonal. The inner product of any two of them is 0. However, we can do better than that. We could say, let's make that have length 1. That means that the inner product of m bar with itself would be 1. So we need a new vector, m tilde. The way we're going to do that is we're going to take 1 over the length of m bar times m1. Okay, that'll, that'll make it be length 1. Well, what is the length of m bar? That's the inner product of m1 with itself, 36, and the square root of that. So this is simply the square root of the inner, inner product of m1 with m1 over 1, m1. So that's 1 sixth, the square root of 36, uh, 3, 5, negative 1, 1. I'm hoping you can do the same thing, uh, taking the length of this, dividing by it, taking the length of this. Those are just going to pop out in front there. Okay, the last part of this problem is to get those Fourier coefficients. That says, take this matrix A. Let's see, we have A equal to negative 1, 27, negative 4, 8. Okay, and the Fourier coefficients, basically what we have now is we have a basis. We have a basis beta of m1 tilde, m2 tilde, m3 tilde. You know those are perpendicular. That means there's, they're linearly independent. Okay, uh, now so if there are three linearly independent ba uh, vectors, that doesn't mean that it's a basis of two by two matrices, right? That's a four-dimensional space. But it's a basis of whatever space it spans. Okay, so it's a basis for the space that it spans. Uh, that means that something like A, if it's inside the span of these, can be expressible as a coefficient times that, a coefficient times that, and a coefficient times that. Well, I bet the burning question in your mind is how do we get those coefficients? Well, turns out you can just take this inner product. Uh, how do you do that? You take the trace of m1, that's 1, 6, 3, 5, negative 1, 1, uh, times, let's see, oops, I didn't transpose that, uh, 1, 5. OK, then I need to put in a, negative 1, 27, negative 4, 8, okay, uh, let's see, if I multiply those out, uh, I get negative 3 plus 4, so that ends up, once I scale by 6, 1, 6, don't really care about those two, 5 times 27 uh, plus 8, so 143 over 6, yeah, I cheated, I did that ahead of time, you add those together, that's 1, 44 over 6 equals 24. That's the coefficient with the first one. You could plug in the second one and the third one, and you get the same thing. Hope that helps.